you start counting on something, that's when it's not available. Slow, slow. I just wanted to share a couple of little things about what we do to kind of prepare to go into a dry camping situation. We were just talking and she just started crying and she's like, you're gonna be 18 your next birthday. That is the difference between lithium and lead acid. This will want to come this way and you, mm. you definitely do not want that to happen. What are you guys laughing at? She said bladder. Bladder? <laughs> what, do you guys have to pee or something? This is why it's worth actually trying to get a site inside a national park. This is ridiculous. So beautiful. This is Panguitch, downtown Panguitch. I just wanted to share a couple of little things about what we do to kind of prepare to go into a dry camping situation or a national park. It's dry camping, boondocking, whatever you want to call it. But what we try to do is I start with as clean a tanks as possible. So we just left full hookups and I clean the tanks as much as possible. Everything's empty. We started to fill our fresh water, but I am actually going to finish filling our fresh water when we get to the national park, just because I'd rather not drive around with 400 or 500 extra pounds of weight yeah. if I don't need to. So we're going to fill up on that. And the other thing we like to do is do your shopping before you get to your location, because you're probably going to have a better selection and it's going to be cheaper. If you get stuck in the national parks, you're going to be paying a lot more for quite a the bit. necessities. And you might not be getting your favorite thing either you're gonna yeah. pay more and you're not gonna get exactly what you want so get as much as you can before you get to where you're trying to go and you know kind of hunker down for a while because right. you don't want to be shopping while you're at a national park you want to you want to spend Enjoy. as much time enjoying the park as possible speaking of that I cannot actually explain to you I've been talking about it for days she's annoyed with it I'm so <laughs> excited to be spending almost a full week or a full week in Bryce Canyon in the um, same site. in the same site <laughs> I'm just, no moving. I'm so excited. This is going to be fun. We're going to pick up a couple extra things uh, and then start making our way. Actually, on the way, there's this canyon you can drive through. I'm going to be able to drone her driving through the canyon. You can't fly in national parks, obviously. Bryce Canyon is a national park, but this canyon looks just like Bryce. It's but it's not a national park, so you can fly there. Red Canyon. Unbelievable drive. I love that canyon. We actually stayed in the campground there before, which I can highly recommend. Amazing. It's called Red Canyon Campground. It has access to that bike trail yeah. that goes the whole way, all the way to Bryce Canyon, basically. Amazing. Really, really cool. The only reason why we didn't stay there this time was because we needed service. Mm -hmm. um, so if you don't need service or you got Starlink or whatever, Red Canyon Campground is amazing. The last time we were here, the camp hosts were incredible. It's a national forest campground, so it's inexpensive and the sites are gorgeous. Oh my gosh, yes, I loved it there. A couple more things that I didn't mention before when I said prepping to dry camp. So obviously you wanna have a full tank of fuel. That's one thing. And another thing is you wanna make sure all of your devices, all of your stuff, if you have a battery bank mm -hmm. or, a, or a solar generator, make sure everything is charged going into the situation. The better prepared, the more power you have. So we have solar. So you say, well, why would you do all that? I think we mentioned before that it's a wooded, a wooded site. site yeah. So there might not be enough solar, so. You just want to get ahead of the game as much as possible as you enter into this like boondocking situation so that you have as much energy stored up as possible. I did look at Google um, and I think I was looking at the right site and I th I'm pretty sure Google's all taken at like noon time, high sun time. And it did look like the sun could see the RV that was in that site. So maybe we We're have hopeful. a good chance that at least we'll get some solar. But otherwise, I mean, 
fire the generator up and charge the batteries real fast. That's the thing about lithium batteries. Our Lion Energy batteries can accept 150 Number amps. One, at the traffic circle, take the first exit onto Utah 63 South. Can accept, you know, 100 amps. So all that we can throw at it, it can take it all the way to full. That is the difference between lithium and lead acid because lead acid will take forever because it has to slowly charge the last 10 or 15%, which you could try to run your generator all day long and you'd never get it charged. Right. So, that's the power of lithium. Hello. Oh, sorry. Let me do. Let me do. Okay. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. I think I did mention it earlier. Uh, we did put some water, our normal amount of water when we're going anywhere, really. I always want to have at least a third of a tank of water because you never know and you never want to count on anything because as soon as you start counting on something that's when it's not available so i would rather have a third than nothing at all but we're here now and the water works so we're gonna have full water check out these signs it doesn't usually it says you know non-potable or potable water that's just a cup with drinking water now look at the other one don't drink it <laughs> Negative. And yes, I'm really excited. I am really excited, but I'm also really excited to get parked uh, because it doesn't matter how short or long a drive day is. You know, when you're moving your family in your house, there's a little it's stress involved. Oh yeah, we're he's, cranking. He's flowing. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. We have a pressure regulator on. Also highly recommended. All right, I'm gonna head in and all right, you watch the tank. Let me know when she's full. Okay. Rick, if you have a window that's near where the water is filling, it'll save you a lot of frustration screaming through the RV outside. So it's easy to hear. Trust us. Almost there. And that's what we want to see. Full. Yep. Full. Yep. Just switched over. She tells me when it's full and then I really start paying attention. And then I uh, wait for the overflow just to get it really full. All filled up. So one more point to bring up. If you're going to do any kind of boondocking at all, make sure you have a way to fill up water. So we have three six gallon water tanks that we carry with us. We've carried with us since we left. So they, they're yeah. always in the bed of the truck. Sometimes I leave one full, sometimes I don't, but. Depends on where we're going. Depends and... on where we're going, what we're doing. It's good to have, you know, some emergency water no matter what. Some people just get 50 gallon bladders and then they just pump it into their tanks. But make sure you have a way to get water. <laughs> what are you guys laughing at? <laughs> Bladder? <laughs> what do you guys to pee or something? <laughs> Keep saying bladder. Um, <laughs> uh, make sure you have a way to go get water without moving your actual RV. Mm -hmm. Might be yeah. an obvious thing, but you never know. So that, I'm gonna throw that in there too. Okay, let's get in this kit. Okay, so Keep going further or not if you want to back out of here. 
gonna back. I'm gonna back up, and I want to get our axles straight. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna go back and forth a little bit until they straighten out. Okay. So the thing we gotta watch for in the site, like this, is this tail swing on the back. There we go. So he's just trying to get these tires to be even with each other on both sides and not have the axles tweaked. Okay, so we just gotta make sure this slide clear, so I'm just gonna drive forward a little bit. Perfect. We just can't go back anymore. You're gonna hit that rock wall. So I said that these axles were a little tweaked. So if you are parking in a tight turn, they will be tweaked and you do not want them to be tweaked. Um, so the main reason why you don't want them to be tweaked is when you go to put your tongue jack down, there's some force on this so that the, the trailer's gonna wanna kick out. So that's why, that's why I do that. That's also why we always double chalk on both sides to prevent that from tweaking sideways. So even though you know you're gonna roll one way, we always chalk both sides. Because there's some torsion on these axles, if, if you let them tweak like that, this, when you take the pressure off this, this will wanna come this way, and you, you definitely do not want that to happen. So, I think that might make more sense than me going like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, we're at Bryce. Level right here, so yeah, I think it's gonna be gonna be good. But this is always my favorite part. <laughs> Lippert, thank you. Auto level. Layla just got sad because she realized Lily's gonna be 18 her next birthday. We were just talking and she just started crying and she's like, "You're gonna be 18 your next birthday." <gasps> Stairs. Isn't this? Isn't this site amazing? Unreal. Ah, oh, this is a this, sweet like, little, little zone here. Little area. Yeah, nice <laughs> <laughs> so this is our our tree situation here. I think that maybe during a portion of the day, when the, if the sun goes up there, we'll get a little solar. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We will see. We'll keep you updated. We're here. We'll share more Bryce later. Outside the campground, this is why it's worth actually trying to get a site inside a national park. This is ridiculous. So beautiful. Unbelievable. You can see the sun just hitting that right there. So, this is the rim trail that follows the campground. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is why you try to get inside the park. This is exactly why you try to get inside the park. But here's my, uh, that's my issue right there. Yeah. The full moon is ruining All my Milky time. Way dreams. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Cause look at this. Nice look at this. <laughs> I will say, he's mentioned it, that this is what Corey is really mad about. See that moon right there? It's gonna ruin all Milky Way photography, I think, while we're here. Look at the I'm sky. Sorry, Turn, keep turning, keep turning. I know. We're gonna, I'm Look gonna make the them sky. all dizzy. Yeah, the sky is <sighs> incredible. I don't think I've been this excited <laughs> about a national park in a long time. Probably because we get to stay here a week. This is awesome. All right. All right, I love this site. It is incredible. 
really quick we wanted to give you guys an overview of Bryce National Park. So Bryce is an incredible amphitheater that has these orange colored spire like structures that come out called hoodoos and that's what gives it such a unique and incredible beauty unlike the other places we visited before. You can drive or hike to all four overlook points that are along the rim trail and we're going to go through all of those and let you know which one is our favorite. Just to kind of give you an overview because I know that was going to be helpful to me before we came we're gonna start at the end. The furthest one that you can get to from the rim trail is called Bryce Point. Um, and that just gives you a great overview of like the whole entire canyon. It's beautiful over there. I think I'd like to do like a like a sunset or a, like a Milky Way shot from there. And then further down is Inspiration Point. And I think that's our favorite. Would you say? Absolutely. This is the one that we recommend for sunrise. I think this has the best view, overall view, and it's lit up perfectly, unlike some of the other places that are in shadows a little bit. So this one's lit up perfectly. I think this is the best view for sunrise. And also, if you are handicapped at all, or you just can't walk big distances, this is the fastest one to get to from a parking lot. So yes, so this one actually has two different viewpoints. You have a lower viewpoint that you can get to really quickly and it's handicap accessible from the parking lot, or you can hike up to the top, which is also absolutely stunning. The next one down Rim Trail is Sunset Point, and this is actually where Wall Street, which is that incredible like zigzag trail, comes up to, as well as the Navajo Loop Trail. And then the next one down from there is Sunrise Point. And that is the closest to our campground. That's where a lot of the trails start. Um, each one is, is different. I don't know, I, I like them all, I recommend them all, but this will give you a good overview of you know what you can expect when you go there. This is kind of just our overview video of Bryce Canyon. Next episode is when we go down into the canyon. We're excited. We're going to see how much we can do in one day. We got a, we got a pretty heavy duty schedule, but we're looking <laughs> forward to it. A lot of you guys have been sending us questions asking how you can help us with YouTube and the algorithm. So here are a couple things that you guys can do to help us out with that. Number one, subscribe. If you guys have not subscribed already, click the subscribe button. And if you're watching on a TV, you're actually able to use a remote to do that. Or you can pull out your cell phone while watching and just subscribe on the YouTube app. Number two, like the video that you're watching as well as giving us a comment. Not only does this help us, but we love hearing from you guys and we love yep. hearing the questions that you have for us. And we hope that we're able to help you guys out with those questions. Number three, you can click on the bell icon, which is under the video to the right side. And that'll actually send you notifications every time we upload a new adventure. And I know everybody says that, but everybody says it because it is really, really helpful. So if you could do that, that would be awesome. The last thing we wanted to address is there's been a little bit of confusion about what the FOS crew is. The FOS crew is a way for us to get to know you guys better as well as you guys being able to stay updated on what we're doing in more real time with lives, updated videos, as well as with our secret Facebook group. We'll put a link in the description below so that you can go and check out more about that. A huge thank you to our FOS crew for your constant support and encouragement. We can't wait to see you guys in Bryce next week.